and we're ready to finally get started with the editor. The compose tab is where you will be spending all your time. This is where you can click on the left side of the screen to place a circle. This timeline is how you keep track of the song and you can zoom the timeline in and out. If you hit space, you can start the song. If you hit space again, you can pause the song, and then you can use the arrow keys to go back and forth so that you can precisely place an object. The next thing is the sliders. Just click here to be able to place one. If you left click, just like with a circle, it will place a slider, and then you have to click again to create the next slider point. And then you can click again and create another slider point, and you can do as many of these as you want. And then if you right click, it will stop the shape. It's important to know how sliders work. If you have two slider points, just like this, one and then two, you have a perfectly straight slider. If you add a point, which you can do by hitting control on your keyboard and then click, now you have two points and you'll notice that this will make a perfect curve. If you were to add more points on your slider like this, it's no longer a perfect curve and it gets a little bit weird. This can be good if you want to use a weird shape, but I recommend if you're just starting out mapping to only use three points or two as it will make your shapes very clear and easy to understand. It's impossible to make a perfect curve look terrible. I mean, you'd really have to do something weird. One last thing, if you take two slider points and you put them right on top of each other, you'll see it turns red and then you have a perfect corner in your slider and you can do all sorts of slider shapes like this, for example. One thing to also be aware of with sliders is that if you put points around these red dots, these curves are not perfect circles. This is not a perfect curve anymore. Be very careful to make your curve look nice if you use both white and red slider anchors in the same slider. A lot of making sliders just comes down to practice. You'll get the hang of it over time. The easiest way to make them look nice is to use simple ones. The last type of object that you can place is a spinner. You left click to begin placing it, you listen to part of the song, and then right click where you want this slider to end. And just like that, you have one of these. One thing to be aware of is how to place rhythms. Up here in the top right, you will see what's called beat snap divisor. What this number means right here is how much of one beat the rhythm is. So this one over one, it's gonna put a circle every beat. If we choose one, two, and we put a bunch of circles, two circles for every beat. Wow. You can also do four, etc. Understanding the beat snap divisor is very important. So here, right off the bat, you can hear we have this rhythm. And it may be difficult when you first start mapping to decide what rhythm that is. I can hear that it is this rhythm. Sometimes it may just come down to practice and you may have to slow the song down using the playback rate in the bottom right to be able to tell what's going on. So let's say we thought this was three if I were to put the circle here. You can hear it doesn't perfectly line up the way it just did. So understanding when to change your beat snap divisor is very important. For 99% of music, you will only need rhythms that are accessible on this one fourth here. So it's important to listen back at a slow pace to make sure that the rhythms you place are accurate. Or else. On the right side of the editor, you'll see all of these tools. Let's say you have these three objects, you'll notice new combo. So if you select an object, which you can do by highlighting it on the play field or in the timeline, you can turn it into a new combo like such. So what I recommend as a new mapper is to put a new combo on every large white tick. The large white ticks that you can see in the editor, those are where your downbeats are. Just like music is built around repeating things, your map should reflect that. One way to do that is by new comboing in accordance with the music. The main thing is to be consistent in where you place your new combos. The other things you'll notice here are whistle, finish, and clap. If you visit the song setup menu at the top, you'll notice the audio tab where you can choose what samples Osu uses for each hit sound. Normal, soft, and drum. So if you select normal, you can hear these hit sounds. These are for my skin. The default skin has different hit sounds. What I recommend is to go back to the first page, turn off use skin sound samples. If we go back to our map after changing that, now you can hear the default Osu sounds. The reason I recommend this is that since your skin may have special sounds or weird sounds, the hit sounding that you do on your custom skin may sound great, but for other players, it may be not so good. So I think that soft matches the tone of my music the most. We'll use soft. So let's say we select this circle and we put a whistle there. And this is how you hit sound your beat map. You can also put a finish. And of course, you can also put a clap and you can also do all three if you would like. 
Really, you want to use these to match the song so that it feels like you're playing along with the song. The other options that you'll have here are Grid Snap. Grid Snap is pretty much exclusively something that is used for old maps. I do not recommend that mappers use Grid Snap anymore. It does not help you in any way. And next up, Distance Snap. This is a very important one to be aware of. If you turn this on and you try and place a circle, you'll notice it's pulling that circle back towards the first one. I can only place a circle a certain distance from the first circle. And that is what's called distance snap. No matter what, if I'm placing circles with distance snap on, they're going to be the same distance from the one previous if they are the same time away. Since this rhythm is half the time of these, it will place it half the distance away. The very last tool you'll see in the editor is lock notes. If this is on, I cannot move any object. They're all locked in place. If you can't move your circles, that's the only reason why. A couple more things in the song setup menu. In advanced, you'll see stack leniency. Let's say you have stack leniency all the way up to 10. You can have two circles that are very far away, but they get offset like this. So the reason that it does this is that you can tell that there's two circles there. On the other end of the spectrum, you have stack leniency zero, where no matter how close the circle is, they still will not stack and they'll always be in the exact same place. This can be a good thing and a bad thing. On one hand, it looks visually nice, but on the other hand, it's very hard for the player to be able to tell that there's two circles there. One thing you want to make sure is that you have stacking turned on. If I turn stacking off, all of a sudden these two circles are in the exact same place. That does not represent the way the map actually plays. So it's very, very important that you turn stacking on. Hello there. This will show you exactly what the beat map will look like when you play it. Colors, these are your combo colors. You can use whatever colors you'd like. You want to enable custom colors. It is something that is required for your beat map. So we have our two combo colors and you can see if you place circles in the editor, they have these colors now. These settings under design, I do not recommend changing them. These are mostly things that are either out of date or just not required anymore. So enable countdown. I'm sure you've played a beat map where it counts down, you know, three, two, one, play before you start. Generally, mappers don't use that anymore because it's a little tacky. And these miscellaneous toggles are for storyboarding related things. We don't have to worry about anything in this tab. There's also a couple other shortcuts to be aware of. You can copy and paste things. Let's say you have a big slider right here, right? A lot of times you may want to make a shape with your sliders. So let's say we want to make a square. We'll copy our slider shape. We will paste it later in the timeline. So now we have two of the exact same slider. If you press control G, it will make the slider reverse. This is the exact same shape, but going the other direction. And I'm sure everyone has seen, if you've played OSU for a decent amount of time, a slider with a reverse arrow. The way to do that is you take the slider and if you hover over the end of it in the timeline, you can create a reverse like such. If you press control and the left and right, um, what are they called? corner brackets, the, the comma or the period key, this shape. If you press those, it will rotate the slider around the center by increments of 90 degrees. Another thing to know, if you press control and H, it flips horizontally, H being for horizontal. Right next to it, you have control J, which will flip it vertically. If you want to rotate something by a specific amount, you can press control, shift, and R. I can enter any value in here. So if you know geometry, you can use this to create more complex shapes. So for example, triangles are made up of 120 degrees or 60, depending on how you rotate. So you see, if I want to make a triangle, I can rotate by increments of 120 and now I have a perfect triangle shape. There is another way to make a triangle which is with control shift D. You'll see that it'll pop up with a menu to create any geometric shape. This is perfect if all you need is circles but if you need a slider to be rotated this does not help you. And you can see that you can choose the distance snap so you can choose how big or small the triangle is. Another one that can help you sometimes let's say you have this shape and you want to make it bigger by a perfect amount. If you copy and paste it and you hit Control Shift S, you can choose how much bigger to make that. So that's all the basic tools of the editor. Now we have enough information to finally get started with the beat map.